Hi everyone, I'm Susan Mulvihill. Welcome back to my vegetable garden. Look, I'm actually in a t-shirt today. We finally have some decent weather and it's actually even going to get into the mid 80s in a couple of days. But we have been having lots of chilly days, a ton of rain, and so this is wonderful to have an actual warm day. So today is going to be the first video garden tour of the season. And my goal is to make it short and sweet because a lot of times when I go through every bed, I explain a lot of things and it probably bores you to tears. So this time I'm going to be brief. This is one of our onion beds and the row that's closest to you is a row of onions grown from sets, which are those small bulbs. The rest of them are onions that I grew from seed using the winter sowing method. And these are doing beautifully. If you're curious about winter sowing, just look on my channel for the winter sowing video and it will explain exactly how it works. In the next bed, I'm growing Swiss chard and beets. And you'll notice there's a sheet of floating row cover in the background there. I keep these plants covered for the entire season because they are very susceptible to leaf miner damage. And so I just keep the cover on the whole time. Now I didn't get the greatest germination of seeds this year, and so I have replanted a few just to get a little bit bigger stand of veggies. Here's where I'm growing carrots and parsnips, and again, I didn't get the best germination, so I have reseeded some of them. This bed is temporarily covered with netting just to keep birds away from the young seedlings, but that'll come off in about two weeks. Also in about two weeks, I will thin all of these plants because it's really important to give them enough room so they can develop a great root. This is the lettuce and sorrel bed and it is doing really well except for one thing. I'm having a terrible problem with slugs. I hate those things. So I'm in the process of trying to trap them and resolve that issue. And I also wanted to point out there's netting on this bed and this will stay on for the entire season because I need to keep birds away from lettuce. They think those leaves are absolutely delicious. And so do I, so I want my share. Here's the kohlrabi and rutabaga bed and the plants are doing beautifully. Now these also have to be covered with floating row cover for the entire season and that's because they can get aphids and cabbage worms. And by having a physical barrier over them for the whole season, because they don't need to be pollinated, I get perfect produce. This is the fava bean bed and it is doing really well, so I'm very pleased. And of course, this is Wiley Coyote. He is a decoy and the goal is to keep the quail away so that they don't nibble on the leaves. It's not entirely successful, but he wanted to be in the picture. I also wanted to point out because sometimes people see these fake snakes and they think, oh my gosh, did I see a snake in the picture? Well, actually, these are just from a toy store and they're also for the purpose of keeping birds away from the plants. I have kind of mixed success with them, but I figure it's worth a try. This is my gutter pea bed. And if you're wondering what in the world I'm talking about, if you look on my channel for plant peas, you will find it from a few weeks ago. But anyway, you can see that we have them growing in here among some natural supports. They're doing pretty well. Again, the weather has been so cold and so wet, they really have been struggling. And we have this floating row cover on the outside of the bed temporarily, just to let them get a little bit bigger because once again, quail like to nibble on the leaves. You would think I would give up gardening with all the birds we have around here, but you just have to figure out different workarounds and then you can do it. Okay, this is the tomato zone. We've got some tomatoes growing in pots, different new types that we're trying. And then I've got three different raised beds with tomatoes growing in them and also a few eggplants. And they're getting off to a little bit of a slow start because it has been so chilly. But now that they're out in the sunshine, I think they're gonna really start growing. I mentioned at the beginning that some things have not gone according to plan. And this has been an interesting lesson for me. So this bed is supposed to have a bunch of cantaloupes growing in it. And you can see the little seedlings. Well, in theory, there were six plants in that bed. 
Now I'm down to three. Insect problem? Nope. I really looked over the plants. There's no insect damage, no signs of insects, but they just kept wilting. And I thought, what in the world is wrong? Well, I finally figured it out yesterday. They are too wet. The soil is absolutely saturated with water. And I know ordinarily you would associate wilting with a plant not getting enough water, but it also can be a sign of too much water. When I dug up the poor little seedlings that were dying, the root system looked, well, puny for one thing, but also a little bit brown. And that is also a sign of overwatering. Now, in our case, it was Mother Nature that was overwatering the plants. So we are making sure that we don't water the garden at all. A few of the plants that are remaining are looking better and we're going to plant more seeds and try to fill this bed because I want my melons. But it's been an interesting spring and certainly a challenge. So if you see plants in your garden and you know they're getting a ton of water but they're wilting, it probably is not a lack of water. Do a little investigating because it probably is overwatering. This is the pumpkin bed and they are doing way better. So they must be a little more tolerant of excessive moisture in the soil. These last two beds are spanned with an arch made from livestock panels, which are also known as cattle panels. And in them, I'm growing winter squash and cucumbers. So the cucumbers, about 50% of them died. And I think again, it's because of the moisture. I couldn't find any insect problems. And so I have to replant them, which is frustrating. But the other plants seem to be doing okay. And again, we're holding off the water for a few days and trying to let the soil get to a more normal amount of moistness. Now you're looking inside our small hoop house. And this is where my husband, Bill, who is the pepper aficionado in the family, is growing his pepper crop. And it's a combination of sweet peppers and all kinds of hot peppers. So far, so good. Right next to the hoop house is where we're growing summer squash. So I've got Claremore zucchini in the front and trombone zucchini in the back. And that's what that support is for. It's a vining type of zucchini that is absolutely delicious. In this next bed, we're growing onions. And these ones were started from onion sets. And then to the right is the garlic and shallot bed. Those are doing amazing. Okay, here's everybody's favorite part of the garden, including mine. This is the bean arbor where I'm growing Musica pole beans. And they got off to a bit of a slow start because of the cold temperatures. But now they seem to be taking off. I even see a few vines that are maybe almost five feet tall, I'd say. So that's cool. Now in the bed that's closer to you, I have celery growing and some marigolds. In the other pole bean bed, we've got a row of onions. These are planted from sets. And then in this little trench here are the leeks I started from seed. And they always get off to a slow start and then all of a sudden, whammo, they take off running. And then you'll notice these four pots here. These are for potatoes. And so far, so good. They're looking nice. Here's corn bed number one and corn bed number two. We're growing sweetness by color, which is currently our all-time favorite corn. And you'll notice they are spaced very closely together. I have found that in raised beds, you can space them one foot apart in all directions. And as you'll see through the summer, they will grow beautifully. So I really get my money's worth with the corn. This is the broccoli bed, and I also have some turnips and onions growing in here. I showed it to you last week when I was doing the video on floating row cover. And I cannot believe how much growth they've put on just in the last week. So they apparently don't mind all this moisture. Now you'll notice the hoops are mighty low on this bed, and that's because it's a four foot wide bed. Our plan is to create much taller hoops in the next week because I really want to have plenty of room, headspace, if you will, for the broccoli plants. And then I'll put either some tool netting on top of it 
or a larger piece of floating row cover to accommodate those hoops. The floating row cover stays over the bed for the entire season and its purpose is to keep aphids and cabbage worms away from the plants. Okay, that's the tour. I hope it wasn't too long. Thanks so much for watching everybody. I'll see you next week. Happy gardening!